Allow me to introduce myself. I am the last sane sports fan. Uh, I am a genius by trade. I just knew too much. everyone and welcome once again to the view from the Midwest. Well I got a few topics that I want to talk about today so I'm going to try to go around and do them real quick. Just a bit of random thoughts out there. Why I don't really know because I think uh, the more topics I try to squeeze in a show the less views I get but let's do it anyway. <laughs> First of all Vladimir Tarasenko of the St. Louis Blues signed a, a big contract uh, 60 million over eight years, which pretty much locks him up to be a blue for uh, the majority of his career. He probably will get one more contract after this, uh, that he's young enough. And if he produces, obviously, it could be even bigger, depending on where salary caps and everything fall. Um, as a fan, I was hoping that he would sign for a little bit less just to give the Blues a little bit extra wiggle room coming not necessarily for the rest of this offseason because I think they're kind of done barring any more trades but maybe in the next offseason when Jaden Schwartz's deal I believe is up and uh, some other players might come up here in the future just to give them that extra little wiggle room because 7.5 million is quite a bit I had hoped that he had signed more for like the the high fives, mid sixes, kind of in that range. But, hey, the, the guy produces a lot of points, and he has increased his offensive production every single year. And I basically think after he signed that contract, he was basically saying, Give it to me, I'm worth it. Baby, I'm worth it. Absolutely horrifying. On to the next topic. Fourth uh, of July is always a fun time. Fireworks, uh, cookouts, hanging out with family, going out, seeing what's out there in the town and whatnot. But apparently it's also the time to do really stupid stuff. And, and I don't say this too much sarcasm, but th there was apparently one man who killed himself because he had fireworks attached to his head. Uh, more on the sports news, Jason Pierre-Paul uh, blew up one of his fingers. Well, he had to have the finger amputated, but he injured both of his hands. There was also a kid with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers who injured his hand. Might have to have uh, amputations there as well. You guys are professional athletes. You need your hands. Don't be messing with fireworks. I understand. I live in a I live in a part of the country where fireworks are easily sold and bought. Uh, you could go to any corner of just about any intersection uh, within the state of Missouri, outside of the city of St. Louis, and maybe Kansas City too. And there's going to be a fireworks stand. So I understand that it's it's huge business. And, and people like to shoot off their own fireworks. It's their thing. Uh, these, these people have maybe cost themselves millions of dollars. Uh, Jason Pierre Paul, for sure, because he, if nothing else, he had at least one year at $14 million with the Giants on the table as a franchise tag. Now, all of a sudden, they didn't know that it, it, they were going to give that to him or not because he refused to sign the, to see the team. And now all of a sudden he's going to be walking around going like this. He's going to be looking like Frodo Baggins. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be lining up in the dirt like this? <sighs> I mean, come on. These are professional athletes. You live near a place that's going to be shooting off professionally shot off fireworks. You don't need to be risking that kind of money. And I'm not usually one who's all about the money, but when it comes to these kind of things, you don't need to be risking your livelihood just because you want to shoot off a few firecrackers. On to the U.S. men's soccer team. Congratulations continue to go out to the U.S. women's team for winning the World Cup. Uh, they're making their way across America. They're going to New York now for a ticker tape parade. But on to the men, they started the Gold Cup. They ended up beating Honduras 2-1 to in a really, really poorly played game. 
Uh, defensively, the U.S. was just a shambles. The midfield, for some reason, was kind of not there. Uh, why Alvarado is one of the center backs right now, I, you got me scratching my head pretty much on that one. Uh, he needs a little bit of a pep talk from Lou Brown after allowing that goal. Come on, Dorn, get in front of the damn ball. Don't give me this Ole bullshit. He's kind of sticking his leg out like that. and There were other things that could have happened to deny that goal prior to that moment, but still, it was one of those situations where just you can't have that. You have to be able to stick with the man. Uh, but... Like the women, beating Australia 3-1 to one, and then continually improving every single game, I think that's what the United States needs to look to do on the men's side in the Gold Cup. You won, you got all three points in the group stage, you're on to the next one coming up on Friday, uh, and then you just look to improve on that and keep improving and hopefully play your very best game in the finals of the tournament. And that's basically all anybody can ask, and hopefully the United States will continue to do that, continue to show that they are one of the best in CONCACAF, despite what all the pundits say, uh, for some reason thinking Mexico is just this ungodly talented team, but they can't win anything. The United States keeps winning. Mexico likes to get a lot of draws against uh, Central American teams, nobody that anybody's ever heard of. The United States is beating European teams now, but Mexico's still the best in CONCACAF oh, by far. Continuing on with the men's theme, and, and I'm, I'm finally starting to understand why European fans are so crazy. It has to do with the media. It's a media problem, and I'm part of the problem. No, no, I'm not, because uh, I'm not really officially part of the media. <laughs> but the, the, just everybody goes back and forth, and St. Louis media in other sports is guilty of this in, in droves. Uh, and I'll actually get to that in just one second. But... When it comes to the U.S. soccer team, they, they played a warm-up game before the uh, Gold Cup against Guatemala, and they won handily in the second half, really. The first half was fairly close, one to nothing. Then they um, ended up winning four to nothing. But then all of a sudden, I watch ESPN FC the next day, and you get people saying, like, oh, I don't know why they were playing Guatemala. That's not a test. That's not going to show you anything. You're just going up there and and beating them uh, the way you should, and it's a no-win situation. If you don't play well, people question it. If you play well, well, it's just Guatemala. What are you supposed to do? They just beat two European giants in friendlies. They schedule one more friendly before the Gold Cup, a team that is similar in style, if not talent, to the, to the teams that they're going to be playing within the tournament. Why? why who are you supposed to schedule? I mean, the, you can't be sitting here playing the Brazils and uh, the Argentinas and the Germanys of the world every single game. <laughs> you do have to schedule somebody that's somewhat similar to what you're going to play. And I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's a no-win scenario for the United States. All of a sudden, you win a few games, and then it's like, oh, well, they, they need to be playing those kind of teams all the time. You can't be doing that. You're going to have, quote-unquote, easy games. Everybody does it. Mexico did it. Mexico hasn't played anybody. And I'm, I mean, I'm sorry to keep picking on that, but Mexico hasn't played anybody, and they're still considered the favorites to win the Gold Cup for some reason. On to the other topic that kind of irritated me about the St. Louis media. Bernie Miklas needs to shut up. I, because the other day on sports radio here in St. Louis, he was basically making it sound like the Blues had fallen so far behind the West that they're literally playing catch-up when it comes to speed. I'm sorry. We only have uh, Vladimir Tarasenko, who's pretty damn fast. David Backus, for somebody his size, is not exactly slow. Alexander Steen is still pretty quick on his feet. Kevin Shattenkirk is one of the fastest defensemen in the league. Uh... Jay Bowmeister is still one of the best skaters in the league. I mean, this notion that all of a sudden, just because Ken Hitchcock during his press conference said, I'm going to let this team loose a little bit more because we got to keep up with the speed 
Just because the coach says that does not mean that the entire team has all of a sudden lost some sort of speed and that we are far and away the slowest team in the West. And all of a sudden, we oh no, we're no longer the team that is challenged for President's Trophies in the past two to three years plus. No, no, no. We're we're out of the playoffs now because uh, we traded away T.J. Oshie, something that Bernie Miklas has been advocating for a long time. Well, he was a fast player, and now all of a sudden you trade him away and you're saying, well, we don't have any speed. The St. Louis Blues are fine. The St. Louis Blues have added a strong piece in Troy Brower. You can advocate for or against the trade. The trade is over. The St. Louis Blues are still a damn good team. Whether or not they have the mental makeup to survive in the playoffs, you can't know that until they play in the playoffs coming up. But to sit here and say that the St. Louis Blues are all of a sudden a slow team is just proving that certain members of the media like to chime in about stuff and they don't really know what they're talking about. Last little bit of business, the NBA, DeAndre Jordan goes back to the Cleveland, or the Cleveland, goes back to the L.A. Clippers after having agreed in principle to a deal with the Dallas Mavericks. Listen, I, I'm i not going to argue for or against this guy. In a basketball move, it makes more sense to stay with the Clippers. They have more talent. Uh, they have a better chance of winning, even though you're going to be playing in the West, which you still would have been if you were in Dallas. But the NBA needs to change something about this. You have free agency starting on July 1st, but you have this week-long period to where you can agree to deals, but you can't sign them. That makes absolutely no sense. The Cleveland, or excuse me, the uh, Dallas Mavericks are pretty much left in the dust uh, due to the fact that they wasted all of their time and effort going after DeAndre Jordan. Now all of a sudden they've missed out on Jeremy Lin. They've missed out on a couple other guards. There's no big men left for them to sign. Now I really don't care personally about the Dallas Mavericks, but just in terms of fairness, how fair is it to, to allow teams to have that opportunity to go after somebody just hardcore, throw everything at them, have them as their linchpin for all of your off-season moves, and then all of a sudden you give that person an opportunity to think, well, maybe this was a mistake, or have their old team come back and try to recruit them again. It doesn't make any sense. That's not really fair. That's not really what the point... I don't know what the point of having them have that period is, but I don't think it was that. Uh, to me, you, once you agree to a deal, you put the pen to the paper, and that's it. The NBA needs to change that, because this is reeking of unfairness, and I'm not favoring either side. That is the view from the Midwest. What are your views on today's topics? Comment, rate, and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. If you're watching on Facebook, give us a thumbs up there as well. Leave a comment as well. And until the next time, I'll see you then.